Infertility is one of the most painful things that a couple can face. The longing for a child can be intense and overwhelming. Faced with this devastating diagnosis, many couples turn to infertility clinics where they're told that in vitro fertilization or IVF is their only hope. But infertility is a symptom of something. There's a reason that a couple is having difficulty conceiving or has experienced recurrent miscarriages. In many cases, that underlying cause can be identified and can be corrected. And couples can conceive through natural intercourse with success rates that are as good or better than assisted reproductive technologies. At the National Gianna Center for Women's Health and Fertility at St. Peter's University Hospital, doctors at our New Brunswick and Manhattan practices work to identify the underlying correctable causes of women's reproductive problems and correct them using treatments which work cooperatively with a woman's naturally occurring fertility cycle. We use an approach known as NAPRO technology, which stands for Natural Procreative Technology. Developed by the Pope Paul VI Institute for the Study of Human Reproduction, NAPRO technology is based on more than 40 years of scientific research into the underlying causes of infertility, recurrent miscarriage, and many other women's reproductive health problems. To understand our unique approach to evaluating infertility and recurrent miscarriage, it is helpful to understand what should be occurring inside a woman's body during her monthly fertility cycle. A woman's ovaries contain her eggs, the special cells of human reproduction. Hormones regulate a woman's fertility cycle, which generally spans a 28 to 30 day period. A woman's fertility cycle begins on the first day of her menstrual period. Early in the cycle, a single egg begins the process of maturing. That egg matures inside of a fluid-filled sac called the follicle. The follicle increases in size during the first half of the menstrual cycle. Halfway through the cycle, the follicle pops or ruptures, releasing the egg, which then passes into the fallopian tube. This is called ovulation. If a healthy sperm is present in the fallopian tube, the egg will be fertilized, leading to conception. As the follicle grows, it produces a very important hormone called estrogen. After the egg is released, that follicle shrivels up and becomes something called the corpus luteum and begins making another important hormone called progesterone. Here is a diagrammatic representation of the hormonal changes that occurred during the menstrual cycle. As you can see, estrogen rises to a peak just before ovulation and then falls dramatically. After ovulation, estrogen is still being made, but now progesterone becomes the dominant hormone. These hormonal changes are critically important for normal fertility. Estrogen goes right back to the follicle, helping it to mature completely. Estrogen stimulates the lining of the womb to build it back up after it was shed during the menstrual period in preparation for the baby to implant. And estrogen travels through the bloodstream to the bottom part of the womb, which is called the cervix, and causes a clear, slippery fluid to be produced. This special fluid, in and of itself, plays an important role in a couple's ability to conceive. First, when that fluid is not present in the vagina, sperm die within hours. The egg lives for only 12 to 15 hours, which would make the fertile window very short. When the fluid is present, and it's usually produced by a woman's body about four to five days before ovulation, it protects the sperm from the acidity of the vagina and allows the sperm to live for up to five days, lengthening the fertile window. At the molecular level, the cervical fluid is also important because it creates swimming channels for the sperm, which allow the sperm to reach the egg. One of the things that we pay close attention to is the quantity and quality of this cervical fluid, also called cervical mucus. If suboptimal, there are medications and supplements which can improve the quality of this fluid. Because the cervical fluid is stimulated by a woman's estrogen spike at the time of ovulation, it's also a great external sign of what is occurring hormonally inside of her body. It's like a window into the hidden workings of her reproductive system. If the quality of her cervical fluid is suboptimal, not only is it a problem in and of itself, 
but it can also indicate that her estrogen levels are suboptimal. This will have a negative impact not only on the fluid production, but on the development of the follicle and on the thickening of the lining as well. Progesterone is just as important as estrogen in the normal functioning of a woman's reproductive system. Progesterone causes a stabilizing matrix and tiny blood vessels to grow into the lining, which prepare the lining of the womb for implantation when the baby attaches to the womb about six days after fertilization. Abnormal progesterone levels can lead to an unhealthy lining, which can prevent implantation or lead to early or recurrent miscarriage. The standard infertility workup evaluates hormone levels on day three and day 22 of the cycle, and women are told based on this limited testing that everything is normal. But this approach misses subtle hormonal abnormalities that occur during critical times in the cycle. These abnormalities may affect fertility and are often correctable. We look much more closely at the changes in these hormones. We begin by teaching a woman to identify the changes and quality of their cervical fluid so that she can accurately identify when she ovulates during her fertility cycle. We do this using the Creighton Model Fertility Care System, a special charting system that a woman learns to use to identify the subtle changes in her bleeding and cervical fluid patterns. She is then taught how to describe these changes using a standardized system that conveys diagnostic data to our doctors. The couple and the physician then use this information to understand what is occurring hormonally in the woman's body. The couple learns this charting system by taking a series of classes with one of our Creighton Model Fertility Care practitioners. These classes can be completed before or after the first consultation with one of our physicians. After two cycles of charting, the couple returns to the Gianna Center to meet with a physician. At this visit, the woman's chart is reviewed for abnormal patterns which provide clues to the causes of her difficulty conceiving. Then, a complete hormone profile is scheduled, timed to her natural ovulation, using her Creighton model chart as a guide. Every other day, starting a week before ovulation, an estradiol level is checked. Then every other day after ovulation, estrogen and progesterone levels are checked. This allows us to plot her hormone curves and compare them to the hormone profiles of women with normal fertility. In this way, subtle hormonal abnormalities are identified. The second component of a woman's medical evaluation involves looking closely at how she ovulates. The follicle should reach a certain size and rupture completely within 24 hours. Some women have a follicle that ruptures prematurely, something called the immature follicle syndrome. Some women have a follicle that matures to normal size, but then does not rupture, or ruptures so slowly that it actually retains the egg. The standard infertility evaluation may check to see if a follicle develops, but it seldom involves checking to see that ovulation has occurred normally. Even in stimulated intrauterine insemination or IUI cycles, which we do not perform here at the Gianna Center, but which is part of the infertility process at many centers, ultrasounds are done to monitor the maturation of the follicle and identify when to administer what is called a triggered dose of a medicine. An ultrasound is seldom done after the woman's trigger dose to confirm that the follicle actually ruptured. Conception is not possible if the egg is not released. We want to know what a woman's follicle does in her body without the influence of any medication. Does it mature completely? Does it rupture normally? Does it rupture at all? This is accomplished in the same testing cycle as the hormone profile that I previously described. Using the Creighton chart as a guide, the woman undergoes a series of ultrasounds which track the maturation and rupture of her follicle. At the same time, we watch to see if her lining matures normally and if the cervix, which should open at the time of ovulation, does in fact open at the proper time in the cycle. Between the hormone profile, the woman's observations of her fertility signs as recorded on her Creighton model chart, and her ultrasound series, we are able to comprehensively evaluate the functioning of her reproductive system and identify correctable abnormalities that prevent her from conceiving. 
treatment of the identified hormonal dysfunction or ovulatory disorder then begins in the fourth cycle with medication and treatment timed to the woman's natural cycle, again using the chart as a guide. Treatment may involve medications, bioidentical hormones, or supplements. But the most important thing about our treatment approach is that all treatments are geared towards correcting the underlying abnormalities. We use treatments that work with a woman's naturally occurring cycle to restore normal function, not just bypass or hyperstimulate it. In some cases, we may even use the same medicines as traditional fertility clinics, but typically in much lower doses and for much shorter courses. Again, with the goal of providing a small boost to the woman's natural cycle to restore normal function, as opposed to hijacking it or trying to make it do something unnatural. During the course of the NAPRO Technology Medical Evaluation, we also evaluate other traditional causes of infertility, such as thyroid dysfunction, other hormonal problems, dietary factors, etc. But these are evaluated in conjunction with the more extensive evaluation I've already described. In some cases, restoring normal function to a woman's reproductive system will require a surgical intervention. For instance, if a woman's fallopian tubes are blocked or damaged, these can sometimes be repaired or opened to restore the possibility of natural conception. Similarly, endometriosis, a condition in which the cells that normally line the inside of the womb implant abnormally outside of the womb, can significantly affect fertility. These implants build up and bleed, just like the lining, but because they're in the wrong place, this can create inflammation that is toxic to the embryo, the egg, and the sperm. They can also create scar tissue that can damage the tubes and the ovaries. Endometriosis may be suspected if a woman has severely painful periods, pain with intercourse, low back pain at the time of her period, or bowel changes at the time of her period. However, some women have none of these symptoms. Her infertility may be the only symptom of this disease. Surgery to remove endometriosis, if present, dramatically improves fertility rates. However, the surgery must be done with great precision and great care to not cause additional scar tissue or damage. Dr. Kyle Beiter, who specializes in the surgical treatment of endometriosis, uses a special approach to identify even subtle signs of endometriosis and correct it using techniques that prevent the formation of scar tissue. Though our approach is focused primarily on restoring normal function to the female reproductive system, some treatments are also available for male factor infertility. We also work together with specialists in male infertility to correct the underlying problems of a man's reproductive dysfunction. However, by simultaneously optimizing the woman's reproductive functioning, even couples with significantly abnormal semen analyses have been able to conceive through natural intercourse. As I mentioned, the key distinction between our approach and the standard approach to treating infertility is a commitment to doing everything that can be done to identify and correct the underlying correctable causes of infertility, to allow a couple to conceive through natural intercourse. As a Catholic Health Center, our staff does not perform IUI or IVF or provide any services which are contrary to Catholic medical ethics as described in the Ethical and Religious Directives for Catholic Health Services. But we welcome people of all faiths and religious traditions to explore this natural restorative approach to treating infertility. We believe that this unique restorative approach to women's health care is not just ethically sound, it's medically sound as well. Finally, though we have been talking about the evaluation and treatment of infertility, the same in-depth approach can be used to treat many women's gynecologic problems, including irregular cycles, abnormal bleeding, polycystic ovarian syndrome, premenstrual syndrome, menopausal symptoms, and many others. We welcome you to explore your treatment options at one of our Gianna Center locations today. Thank you for choosing St. Peter's.